Welcome to Between the Stacks, After Hours, a podcast made possible by Athens Limestone County Public Library. Each episode brings you a conversation, a cocktail, and some contemplation about a notable author and their work. So grab your favorite beverage and let's go Between the Stacks, After Hours. Hello and welcome to another episode of Between the Stacks. After, After hours. hours. I think we I was thinking we had to say it a little more creepily because this is the month of October. Was so, that creepy yeah, enough? I don't know. We'll try it again. Welcome to another episode of Between the Stacks. After, After hours. hours. <laughs> that was good, right? That was good. Even though this won't air in October. <laughs> no, but it is October, so we're still doing a nod to the Halloween. All right, so this month, as we talked about at the end of our last episode, we chose to talk about... Colleen Hoover. Colleen Hoover, Coho, as my friends call her. For real? Coho. I'm not making that up. Uh, that's like her like hashtag. Coho. Oh. Mm-hmm. She See? has her own hashtag. Yeah. And this month, we decided to bring on a guest. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hey, my name is Shelby. <laughs> Welcome, Shelby! Yay, Shelby! Do I do first and last name? It, or no, just? it doesn't. I don't think we do. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm Shelby a, Rudolph. Shelby Rudolph, mm-hmm. like the reindeer. Yeah, exactly. I like it. Yep. Okay. So, and as you all know, every episode we choose a cocktail to go along with our author. So, like we said, we picked Colleen Hoover and. Well, you're going to have to bear with me on this, on my logic. All right. So I did a lot of digging because normally we'll look up whomever. Mm -hmm. Mark Manson loved bourbon. Mm -hmm. Uh, Stuff just appears. They might talk about what they like to drink. Well, I I found the only two things I found about Colleen was according to some girl who wants to be her best friend. She says that Colleen Hoover likes Diet Pepsi. Mm -hmm. And she actually made up a cocktail to go along with this. Is this Rachel Hollis? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's wash your face girl, isn't it? Yeah, girl, wash your face and stop apologizing. Oh. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, maybe she's a bit more of a, like, authority maybe on Colleen Hoover's taste than I thought. Maybe. But I still don't want to drink Diet Pepsi. Okay. So, I also <laughs> came across a tweet from Colleen that said, that talked about how much she loved orange juice, but that she's highly allergic to it, so that sometimes she'll eat a Benadryl just so she can drink orange juice. Okay, so then I was like, well, that doesn't really help me very much. We're not mm-hmm. going to have like a Benadryl cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> that might make for some good conversation. Yeah, I'd be dead asleep on the floor. <laughs> okay, so I read an NPR article about Colleen, and they just put it out like two days ago, and they talked about that she's like the most popular author ever. Like her record numbers beat James Patterson's record number. What? She's the, She has the number one holding record of Simon & Schuster, I guess, of like opening day sales. Which I'm not really That's surprised wild. about. Do you think? I, I don't know. I, I mean, mean, with our I'm, age group, probably women. Yeah. So. Well, in the same NPR article, they talked about how she's an author that brings diverse crowds. So, oh. <clears throat> all right. So, my logic on the drink was, okay, well, what is the number one most popular cocktail in America? And it was. Did you Google it? Yeah. Okay. Margarita. It was the margarita. So, this is a, a what did I call it? A Colleen Arita. Colleen Arita. A Hooverita. But I, in, in, <laughs> <laughs> we can go back to the Hooverita though, because it's pretty funny. Yeah, that's that good. Stuff. I put a splash of orange juice in this baby in honor of. Oh, we'll drink it for her. Cheers. To Colleen. Yeah. yeah. Cheers. <laughs> And you put a little bit of Corona as well, right? Okay, so our guest, Shelby, I, I recall oh. once her telling me that she prefers her margarita with a beer. Yes. I like the splash of beer in the margarita. It just, like, cuts out, like, the super sugary, mm-hmm. syrupy heaviness, mm-hmm. I guess. Mm-hmm. It is good. I like, like it. lighter, yeah. crisper. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you know what's funny is I know I know I like some margaritas, and some margaritas I straight up don't. But this is the flavor profile that I prefer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I had no idea that's what it was. Mm-hmm. Well, I ended up finding a recipe that had a beer in it, and I was like, this is what we're going to do. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> Look at us. So I started reading Colleen Hoover. It's been several years ago. I started with It Ends With Us. I listened to it. It's probably been 10 years ago. That's mind-blowing. Ish. 10 years ago? I had ago, no really? idea. Or well, two years ago, you said. Say 10 years, it probably came out like seven years ago. <laughs> well, I mean, that's still... But maybe six or seven years ago. Really? Yeah. Huh. I didn't Ooh. even realize that. I know. She was like really new. So she just like, really blew up. And I, I'm going to pull up that NPR article again. Because there's a lot of good info up in there. 
I'm going to be honest with you, though. 2016? Yeah. Um, someone recommended it to me. I listened to it when I was driving to New Orleans, listened to the whole thing. Uh, what were you going to New Orleans for? Oh, and you had a business trip, and I was like, Party. I, what? I can drive for like six hours by myself in a car and listen to a book. Hell yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, so yeah, I listened to that book on the way down there, and then I read Confess and... That was, I started that one and you actually schooled me because I put it down because the way the intro was, I thought it was a bunch of random story. I can't remember what I thought it was, but I was like, I don't want to read this. And I told you that and you were like, no, no, no. I think her readers gave her stories. Is that right? Yes. Because they want, have you read, Shelby, have you read Confess? No. I've only read two books by her. What'd you read? I read Verity and it ends with us. But, uh, yeah, Confess was about the painter who painted things that were confessions. And she, you found that she actually got her readers to send in confessions to put in the book as yeah. his really? paintings. That's it's cool. a good one. You need to read that one next. Yeah. Okay. So Is when it I, cheesy? No, it's it's actually a little bit edgy. Okay. Ooh, edgy. Okay. I did. Yeah, wow. she does tend to get, some of hers are a little cheesy, a little geared towards more young mm-hmm. adult, maybe. Yeah. So yeah. I remember reading that her first books were young adult. Really? Oh, yeah, so I think sense. Slammed was her first one. It was self-published on Amazon, and it was about, I think, teenagers and slam poetry or something, and it just kind of started slow and then picked up, and to my knowledge, I could be kind of wrong here, but from what I've read, I'm pretty sure it was mostly TikTok that kind of flew her recently over the past few years into mega stardom. Hmm. So she really gained a lot of her following from TikTok, mm-hmm. book talk. I feel like Verity is what really, like, everybody was like, you have to read Verity, you have to read Verity. Mm-hmm. So that became kind of... It was of- a stretch from what she usually did, I think. Yeah. Well, see, I didn't know that. That was the only book that I had read by her, and then I read It Ends With Us. Gotcha. So I was like, what is this? And now a movie is going to come out based on the book It Ends With Us, correct? And so that's yeah. even that's putting what I her even heard. higher up on... Mm-hmm. Okay, so we can start with Verity, or we can start with... It ends with us, because we've all three read both of those, right? I say let's start with Verity. Okay, okay. Everyone kept recommending Verity to me. Actually, Anna was the first one. And like you said in our last podcast, you were the one who donated Verity to the library. Yeah, when I was working for the library, someone told me to read it. I read it, and I was like, wow, this is good. And everybody wanted to get their hands on a copy. And I said, I'm donating this because we need more coho in this library. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so I I will admit to you, when I see, like, a Colleen Hoover-type book, generally, I'm, like, predisposed to not read that kind of book. I'm just like, meh. I always said, traditionally, anything that has, like, the B word or shopping on the cover, I'm not going to read it. Not that that did, but she just kind of gave me that vibe. Yeah. But I was in a book club, and they were like, Ma, Coho, wow, we love her. And so I was finally like, fine, yeah. fine, fine. I mean, since I do, you know, recommend books for a living. And I read, I think I started, I might have started with Reminders of Him. And I'm pretty sure I read it in 24 hours. I'm yeah. trying to remember that one. Is that the one where the, the kid was involved? There was a daughter? Let me remember Reminders. Let me look it up. Let's remind you about reminders. Reminding now. I think that one made me cry buckets. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yes, I cried. I cried a lot. Yeah. That might verge on cheesy. And you know, that's the thing, though. And we can move into what you think, too, because I know what Shelby thinks, and Anna doesn't know what Shelby thinks yet. But it's about it ends with us, right? But yeah. I'm dying to hear, well, though. This is, this is my overall... <laughs> My overall opinion, then I'll shut up and let y'all talk. But what I always say about Colleen is that, yes, I think her books can be pretty cheesy, and some of parts are really cringy. But what I like most about her in every single story is that I feel like I could be friends with her characters. They're like normal people who are funny and witty, which leads me to understand that Colleen is Mm -hmm. funny and witty. And it's her writing style that I can... It's not necessarily the stories that suck me in. It's the way she writes that I love so much. I completely agree with that. I feel like I don't care for her stories as much, but her writing style is so easy and flowy that you just like, Mm -hmm. you want to know what happens, Mm -hmm. even if you don't really care for the story. Mm -hmm. Like you're just like... It just flows. She has great well. like character development. Yeah. yeah, you want you care about the characters mm-hmm. by the time, so then you're not going to put it down because you want to know what happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So set up Verity. 
Let's um, y'all, describe. Y'all didn't see how does it? Face. I haven't seen. Yeah, she's like, what? <laughs> so, uh, how does that one begin? I know that it's um, there's like a writer in the city that somehow she, she needs a ghost right to finish the woman's series. There's a writer who has a super popular series, and there's an accident. So the publishing company mm. goes to this writer who isn't all that successful and makes her this fabulous deal she can't refuse. That's right. right. Are we allowed to spoil books? I don't do we spoil. I don't know. I think we. I feel like that's the only way to really talk about it. Let's do if it. It's a if you haven't read it yet, spoiler then you alert. need to read spoiler it. Spoiler alert. Both of yeah. these books. Even if we spoil it, you sh- still should read it. Yeah, because we're not even doing it justice. Yeah. And like we said, it's not the story itself necessarily. It's the way she writes them. Yeah. So so she gets involved with a man. And how does she get involved with that man? He's the husband he's, of the lady. He, so the lady, <gasps> the the lady that's the writer. Is, is incapacitated? She's like in a coma or something that's in the house. right. Air quote, coma. Air quote. Uh-huh. <laughs> Let's get this straight. So um, anyway... So the new writer comes in and starts reading her is it diary, biography diary. or autobiography. I mean, she, I guess it's written like a purpo- book proposal or something, I think, and it's written like a diary. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So she, she really can't discern whether it's a diary or like a book. Yeah. And she starts like unveiling all this crazy stuff that like she's done and whatever. But then the new writer that comes in and the, her and the husband, husband have like a an affair, right? Like in this extreme sexual chemistry. Yeah, I remember and that part. They have well, yeah. It was, it was like <laughs> that's half the part I remember. I, well, it was a little like <laughs> it was a it, lot. Was it was like if you want to read a smut book yeah. with a good storyline, like. That's a good smut book. And it's a little bit of a, like a mystery thriller, yeah. too, right? That's yeah. what I remember distinctly about it was that was the first one I read of hers that felt more thriller-ish. Yeah. That's what, so, like, so the scariest <laughs> part in that book to me was when, I can't remember what, the, like, the main character's name is, but anyway, her and the the husband are, like, on the couch making oh, out, yeah. and they're, like, about to have sex, and she like looks up, and the wife that's supposed to be in the coma is standing at the top of yes. the stairs, staring down yes. at them. And I was like, "Oh my god!" Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> I was like, "I was scared." This yes. is so creepy. Yes. Yeah. That was good that. though. I remember that. That was like I thought that was a good book. That's when I was like, "Page turn, page turn, page turn, page turn." Yes. Yeah. And so Layla, I just finished that one at the beach last week, and that one was reminiscent of Verity, but. A little bit more of a stretch. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You said that that because, one was weird. Uh, n- newsflash, I don't think I'm giving anything away with this one, but pretty much um, he falls in love with a ghost. But what I loved about that was the symbolism, and I totally get down with this because he falls in love with this, like a personality, like a ghost is really just a soul. So I love the symbolism and the fact that he doesn't fall in love with someone physically. He falls in love with them emotionally. Yeah. And I like that part of it. So mm-hmm. I, I had to keep reminding myself, okay, this this could be symbolic. Everyone because it, it's, it could be a little cheesy. But. <laughs> yeah. I remember we chatted about this in our book club chat because I brought up Kesha. You remember? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kesha had a relationship with a ghost. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. That's what I immediately thought but of when you said But she that. didn't have relationships. She had relations, she says, with She a had ghost. relations. Which, that's I was trying to be kind. Thing. I mean, <laughs> it's her. Kesha. It but she also made a crown out of teeth, so. Like her, her fan's teeth. Yeah. What? That's true. Kesha? Yeah. <laughs> Out I don't there. know why I know so much about Kesha. <laughs> Are you a huge Kesha No. Fan? <laughs> I think I read one article about the teeth thing, and from there you I was got like, a rabbit hole. I hate Kesha. <laughs> so everything she ever said, I'm like, you know what Kesha said? <laughs> anyway, she's not cool anymore anyways. Never. She never was. Yeah. Uh, she was cool for but a little bit. Whatever. All right, cool police. <laughs> yes, I am the cool police. And you're going to get in trouble, so you better watch it. <laughs> um... So, okay, we've got to get to It Ends With Us, and I've got to hear Shelby's opinion. So, I read It Ends With Us. I liked it. I love the fact of the whole, we're going to, like, ending a cycle. 
Yes. Like she's ending a cycle of abuse. Yeah. Okay. She makes a conscious decision. Hey, we're, we are not going to, I'm not going to let my daughter think this is okay. And I think I like that, I guess, message from the book. So that's what I was left with, with that book. But now a little birdie told me Shelby has some strong opinions. This book gets me heated. Let's (laughs) hear it. Like I, I'm honestly like a little bit embarrassed about how much, like how much I hate this book. Really? Yes. You hated it and then you kept reading her book? Okay. This is the only reason why I continued to read the book was because first of all, it had like a bajillion five star reviews. Second of all, the only other book that I had read by her was Verity, and it had like this crazy twist in the end. Mm. So I thought that there was going to be like some kind of twist that made this book good. <laughs> and, <laughs> well, so I continued to read it, like waiting on something to happen. So, <sighs> okay. It's going to be okay. Where to begin? (laughs) Okay, so first of all, it's so cheesy. So cheesy. There are so many super cheesy things in this It's romance, Shelby. I know. I didn't know that I was reading a romance (laughs) novel or I would not not have read it at all. I'm not a big romance fan either. So, okay. I don't know if you listened to it or read it. I listened to that one. So, you know, there's like a little excerpt that... She does at the beginning, and she's like, I wrote this book to empower women so that they could know that they could get out of a bad, mm-hmm. like, break the cycle, and da 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 That is wonderful that she wanted to do that. But I feel like if she were going to do that, then she should write a book that is even semi-relatable. This mm-hmm. book, there is zero relatable things in this book. Like... Lily Blossom Bloom is 24 years old, and she opens her own shop, her own mm. flower, flower shop, shop in, in Boston. downtown yeah. Boston. True, yeah. true. That is super successful. And Mary, isn't he a surgeon? He's a surgeon, a neurosurgeon, yeah. right? Yeah. So and sure, he's like, Lily, what, you can. Twenty-seven, because he like you're not even out of med school. At that yeah. Age. So her whole intention for writing this book was to like connect with people and like try to empower women. If you want to just write a book that's like a fairy tale domestic violence book, then write a fairy tale domestic violence book. But if if you want to try to connect with somebody and like be like you can do this too, mm-hmm. then write something that's semi related. So you have a point in the sense that you know it's easy for Lily <clears throat> to get out of a relationship like that. She owns her own business. She's well, she owns her own business. She's a very successful. Um, what was the abusive guy? Oh, it was, was like Ryle. 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 Yes. And I'm of like, of course he'd have a name like Ryle. Ryle. <laughs> yes. I'm like Ryle. Uh, he gets riled up. Yeah. <laughs> oh my <sucks>. God. <laughs> And Do you then, think she did that on purpose? Yeah, <laughs> totally. Like, yeah. God. And then, so... And I, Lily okay. opens Lily. a flower shop. And Lily, Atlas. <laughs> Lily Blossom Bloom opens a flower shop. Atlas is a homeless teenager. Uh-huh. That has no one to help guide him in his life. No help at all. I forgot about that. And then she randomly walks into the number one restaurant in Boston. Boston. <laughs> and he is the chef there. He runs. Also he, 20 She has a charmed runs, life, obviously. Yeah. Extremely. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. that's bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. but like, no. And then she's <laughs> dating a surgeon. Yeah. Who does minimal, I mean, I'm not trying to like. You're not trying to minimize abuse. But at all. Yeah. I'm not trying to minimize abuse at all. But like she's trying to reach out to people that are in abusive relationships. And this girl is in a relationship where there were what, three instances in the book mm-hmm. where he did something terrible? Yes. So I just read the sequel so I have a I have a refreshed mind. So one was a slap, I think. Yes. One she was pregnant, I think he pushed her down the stairs. Mm-hmm. And the last one he pinned her and bit her. Yeah. Which is and not okay. No. No. None of that is okay. And and, but, and to her defense, just being devil advocate here. Okay. To her defense, 
some people who have those tendencies, if they get away with certain actions, mm. they may go further in. But absolutely, a lot of women are in even worse situations. Oh, yeah. I just, yeah. I guess, like my whole thing behind it is like, yes, it's good for you to write a book to try to like be like, hey, you can get out of, you don't have to stay in something toxic. Mm-hmm. But it's like he slapped her. But that was like, she was so surprised that he did this, you know. And then after that, everything was perfect again. Nothing happened again. Mm -hmm. And he didn't make her feel scared or make her feel uneasy about what she said or did Mm -hmm. or anything at all. There was nothing other than that physical slap, really. Then it happens again. And I just don't think that that's relatable. Like, I think that anyone that has ever been in an abusive relationship or, like, even just a highly toxic relationship, that's not really close to how it Mm -hmm. goes in my experiences or people that I know their experiences with that. It's just so... If you were gonna, perspective. If you were going to choose, like, a fairy tale domestic violence relationship, you would choose that one. Yeah. Yeah. And that is why <clears throat> I hate that book. Huh. I almost, like, feel like I didn't ever think of it that way. And then when she told me that, I was like, dude, you're so right. That's right. She was privileged in the sense that she was able to escape a relationship like that. She's yes. Privileged. Like, she's like, Lily is like, I need space to think about this. And he's like... I totally understand that. And, like, (laughs) gives her all the space. Yeah. She has a place to live. And his sister, who's, like, buku, mega, mega wealthy, Uh who also helps and gives her a place to stay. Mm -hmm. And Right. That's not typical. No. (laughs) At all. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's like, she has all of the means. Um, She. They have a child. They have the child. But then she's like. On the day that she has this baby and he's holding her in his arm, she decides right then and there that, okay, I can't do this anymore. I'm like... What's interesting, too, is she's so adamant about having to get out of this relationship, but in the end, doesn't she make the point that he's a wonderful father and she wants him to be super involved? Which is also weird because, like, I know someone and she's going through all these issues in her relationship with the man, and she's currently baking her second child. And she's adamant that he would only be abusive towards her and never towards a child. And I always find that to be questionable, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, where does the controlling part end? Is it really going to always end with the kids? What about when they're bigger or yeah. older, yeah. You, know? you know? Yeah. If y'all thought that book was annoying, you should read the second one. You know when you, like, you have hope? And you have hope, so and you're reading it. Allison's. Now, this is the newest book, so I'm not gonna. Sh- I'm not gonna tell. Oh, no, we're that's not gonna that. spoil this one. Let, let me tell you one more thing that I really Go ahead. hated about. Preach. <laughs> <laughs> so, Atlas, the homeless kid that became a master chef, a master chef. Which I mean, that can happen, and great for him. But, but he's also like, it's not so unlikely. Yeah. And okay, so anyway. The whole Finding Nemo reference. <laughs> Wait, is, what? Yeah, I don't remember that. It's huge in the book. Okay, <laughs> they both loved the movie Finding Nemo, and they loved Ellen DeGeneres. Dory. <laughs> and so every time oh, that, that something bad was happening, or if they just needed a little encouragement, they would randomly, like, text one another or write it in a letter and they would say just keep swimming mm-hmm. oh <laughs> no <laughs> that's so awful that sounds so then no to all the men out there do not text Shelby any sort of Disney references <laughs> no. you ain't gonna win any point no definitely not a Disney adult <laughs> so then at the end of the book she's taken her child I can't remember what the first name of the baby Hold on, give me a moment. It's Emerson. Emerson. Wow. She's taking Emerson to go be with Ryle, (laughs) and she's walking down a busy street in Boston, and she happens to pass Atlas. And so she's like, oh, my gosh, there he is, whatever. Well, she drops Emerson off with Ryle. She throws the baby on the ground. And (laughs) she 
comes back and she's running through all the people and she catches up to Atlas and she's like, I just wanted you to know that you've been the whatever for me through all these years and my baby's name is Emerson Dory. Mm-hmm. Wait, what? Her baby's middle name <laughs> is Dory because they Mike said, drop, just drop. keep swimming to each other. And yeah, if I that. had a physical book in my hand when I was reading that, I would have slammed it <laughs> shut. I was like, are you kidding me? So Shelby yes. should have been here when we talked about the whole Little Mermaid thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, you, so you were never like a fairy tale Disney princess. Like, the girl being saved, all that stuff. We were just talking about how a guy we like to listen to on podcast, Malcolm Gladwell, redid the Little Mermaid um, story because he hated the way that, like, Ariel gave up her voice for a man, Mm -hmm. got legs, and tried to chase after him. He had to save her. You know, it's just so helpless, you know. Yeah. But boy, was she hot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Love this <some> Ariel. <laughs> that red flowing hair yeah. and those seashells. And that mermaid tail. <laughs> yeah, we all wanted to be Ariel and brush our hair with a fork. However, my hair wouldn't be brushed through with a fork and it got stuck. It's no big deal. It's fine. <laughs> did you try to brush your hair with a fork? Yeah, so, well, I think. Of course, who did it, Shelby? <laughs> <laughs> so, so just, has Colleen ever written any, like, Besides, I guess, mm. what she claims as it ends with us being female empowerment. I mean, really, it's heavily romanticized. Yeah. Implausible at best. I just, yeah. That's why it just, it really, it pissed me off reading <laughs> the book. Like, reading the book, it's a good flowy read. It does suck you in. Her writing is really great, but the actual story like if you want to have like a la la land kind of experience an escape and there's nothing wrong with that yeah, sometimes I don't mean we that in those, a bad we call yes. it, I call it a fluff read you know yes. yeah. and, and I mean I'm I'm behind that like I love a good escape book whatever but when you have she crossed that, into this like real real world for a lot of women yes yeah and in the beginning of it she did the little like disclaimer type yeah that was like i wrote this because my mother and my grandmother were both in abusive relationships and Mm -hmm. my mom broke the mold or broke the cycle yeah yeah i just expected better something more realistic i'm interested to see how what they do with the movie you know i wonder if they change it a little bit because that doesn't seem like it would translate very well to a movie right and i feel like in the movie they're gonna make it be like he is like a little bit scary Mm -hmm. and he does do more like and i mean in an hour and a half movie it's gonna be easy to have three instances where that's true somebody has slapped you shoved you down the stairs when you're pregnant i mean those things are horrible it'll it'll seem like glimpses in Mm -hmm. a movie where in a book those were the three instances yeah that's interesting yeah That, honestly, it's kind of interesting the way that you just said, because the suspension of disbelief. So, like, in a book, you have the whole world in your hands, right? Or you're listening. Everything that exists about this story, you are privy to it as the reader, right? There's nothing to... to, There's nothing hidden. There's no, like, you can't leave an assumption with a reader. You have to spell it out. Whereas in the movie... You can explain so much more. And it's so much easier to build a world by visualization versus, Mm -hmm. like, I'm telling you every single thing that happens. So, that's that's interesting. All right. These are all the Colleen Hoover books I read this year. Are you ready? Wow. Because I kept up. I have my Beanstack app for the library, and I keep up with all my books. So I read Reminders of Him, Verity, It Ends With Us, Without Merit, and It Starts With Us. I really did like the Reminders of Us, even though... Reminders of Him? I did like that one, but it was an emotional read, for sure. So the newest book came out last week, It Starts With Us. Mm -hmm. And... Are you going to read it, Shelby? That's a negative. (laughs) It took me probably two or three days to get through it. I don't recommend it. I don't think it's a good book. I don't think it added anything to the story whatsoever. And in that NPR article I read, because I went after I finished, I was like, I got to see what other people are saying about this. So, of course, you've got your, like, I was crying when I started the book because I'm so excited, people. But there were a lot of people that were like, this did nothing for the story at all. Mm -hmm. Like, in a story, you have to have rising action and a climax. Mm -hmm. And I don't feel like we got that. Did you finish it? I did. did. Yeah. And she said in the article that she wrote it under pressure from her fans 
that she doesn't really do sequels, and she wrote it as a standalone, and I feel like you can really tell. The story wasn't... mm -mm. Uh, I give it a no. Sorry, Coho fans. Oh, yeah, we're going to make some people really mad, because she has a cult following. Yeah, Yeah, she she does. does. I would say Give Confess a try. I just remember really liking that one. And it it was an escape book. Yeah. But it also had a little bit of a mystery to it, which intrigued me. And it was a little edgier, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it. It starts with us, I guess. Now I don't know if I'm going to. You guys have really mm. made me, like, <laughs> rethink it. But <laughs> Verity, definitely read. Yeah. Verity was a good read. And I Layla, if you can think abstractly with Layla and you, um, that was the whole time I was like, this is so unbelievable. I cannot do this. And then I kept thinking, okay, and I just think of it as symbolism, and I'd appreciated it that way. But I read the Maybe Someday. That one was super cheesy. November 9th, me. I feel like it, I started a couple of these and just quit. I like when I read Verity, I was like, heck yeah. Like, I'm gonna. <laughs> heck yeah. But so this is what I thought she was gonna do with It Ends With Us. Is this, is this how you would change it? Yes. Mm, okay. So after reading Verity, it had such a, like a wild twist that I kept reading thinking. Oh, because you read Verity first. Yes. So you really got to her more complex writing before you went back to her fluff. Yeah. So that's what I thought I was getting with that. I didn't know that she was really more of a like a romance. romance. Or, is that what you, is that what um, you know? It's funny because I feel like a lot of her books are so different from each other. Yeah. I feel like some are very teen oriented. Mm-hmm. Like that Without Merit book, I felt like I was supposed to be 12 yeah. when I was reading it. And then I know she started out as a teen author, but then you got Verity. You got just like a different style. But on the whole, I'd say mostly teeny romance Yeah. So how would you change it? Okay, so this is what I thought was going to happen. You know how when he slapped her and, and pushed her down the stairs and bit her. I thought that it was going to be like a flip. And then it was going to be she was actually the abusive one. Ooh. And it was going to play it from like his side and like. Like that was her interpretation, but it yeah. really wasn't. Yeah. That would or, yeah. or not not even that. Like almost like she, she changed she the story knew that she was manipulative. Like I Ooh, thought that she yeah. was going to know that she was being manipulative and like. Maybe he did slap her, but, like, she knew that she was, like, trying... Or that she was one to provoke Provoking him to do something, like, finally getting something out of him so that she could use it against him. Yes. Which... And... Rewrite it, Shelby. You should be an author. Maybe I should be like... (laughs) Here's my revision, (laughs) Hoko. Here you go, (laughs) Coho. That's so funny. I can definitely see that. I I thought that would be, like, really cool. Because... Well, I mean, she set the bar high with Verity as your first, you know. That's what you said. I liked the way you said you entered her complex writing first. Right. And then accidentally moved to fluff. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like it's not life changing, but I kind of feel like a lot of younger readers probably love her because like the NPR article, they quoted this young reader who said, I didn't know reading could be like this. But I mean, when you find your jam, that's kind of what brings you into loving reading. I agree because like I found a book that I was like, oh my gosh, this is so great. And after I read that book, I was like, I want to read more. I want more like this or Mm-hmm. Maybe not even more like that, but it was just more capturing that feeling. Yeah. yeah. So you expected her writing to to give you that, and and when that was out of character for her. Yeah, I didn't know what yeah. her vibe was. Yeah, because like because um, Verity was definitely one that was more out of character for her. Yeah. I thought the ending of Verity was slightly clever because you still didn't really know. Yeah, but that's true. I don't, I don't really. I kind of like for it to be like tied up with a bow. Yeah. Like I want to. Yeah, being on that like teeter. Like, could it be? Could it not be? I don't really like to be left hanging. Like yeah, that. I'm okay yeah. with things being left open to interpretation. Yeah. Or- I mean, I did really like Verity. I just was like, I wish mm-hmm. it was a little more clear. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's not much to find out about. 
Mm -hmm. calling right right the article i keep referring to that one article because i haven't found too much and that may be because i'm not an avid tiktoker oh so she's very active on the the tiktok the tiktoks but on on the npr article she said recently she's taken a step back because it's become so overwhelming um, Mm -hmm. with the expectations and kind of the pressures of social media and feeling like she constantly had to update and talk to the fans so she's been taking a break But in the article I read, essentially, she lived in a trailer with her high school sweetheart. They had three kids. Um, She wrote her first story at age five, and it was titled Mystery Bob. (laughs) (laughs) So she's always loved to write. Let's read that one, Shelby. (laughs) (laughs) But it's really good. Sounds good. (laughs) But you you wrote a song when you were eight. I did. And it was really good. (laughs) (laughs) It was very deep, right? It honestly... Kind of sad. <laughs> oh, Maybe that's what Mystery Bob is like. But <laughs> so she, like I said, she did her first books. So she self published them on Amazon and it started out as a trickle. And then, at least from the article I read, my understanding is that she was publishing and she had a small following, but then TikTok started lifting her up and people got really jazzed and it just blew up really yeah her most recent book the newest one i just read it starts with us she sold eight hundred thousand copies on day one really yeah Whoa. so highest selling book record of all time for her publisher simon and schuster and she outpaced james patterson wow yeah I mean, that's pretty impressive that is very very i think that kind of shows you the power of tiktok yeah so there's something else we could find out about her life does she have children three mm-hmm. three children and she's what, our age? She's 42. Mm, she's older than me. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> <laughs> if she, I think if she can continue. So here's the thing. I liken this to the Harry Potter series. So, you know, Harry Potter started out. It was very innocent-ish, fantasy-ish. Yeah. And, but then it got darker and darker as it went on because the readers grew up with mm-hmm, the series, right? right? Yeah. So I feel like if Colleen, if you started with her fluffier books and then you go along and she gets more complex as you age and you become more complex. Mm-hmm. So if she continues to evolve her writing, I think she won't be a fad. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to say about Coho? Oh, this is what I just found this and I like it because I like the Ava brothers. But it says, in 2011, Colleen began writing her first novel, Slammed. With no intentions of getting published, she was inspired by a lyric, Decide What to Be and Go Be It, from an Ava Brothers song. Yeah. Because of this, she incorporated the Ava Brothers lyrics throughout the story. After a few months, her novel was reviewed and given five stars by a major book blogger, Maris Black. So she had the NPR article. There's a New York Times article dated October 10th. There's one on Vulture from one day ago, and BuzzFeed News one day ago. I feel like she's just, we're at the height. And I think one thing people underestimate a lot is the talent it takes for it to feel so natural Mm -hmm. for us to read it. Mm -hmm. So we obviously have seen that she's grown through her writing. Yes. And you can see that now. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to see the movie, I think. And I feel like, okay, I get the story. I'd lo- I'll, I'll, I'll watch it. Yeah. So is the movie going to be just It Ends With Us or It Ends With Us Plus? The movie script was declared finished in July 2022. There's a possibility they might kind of scoop in some of that because, like I said, I don't feel like the second book furthered the story much at all. So it would be super easy to put, like, seven whole details into the movie and capture that last book, too. Yeah. Shooting will start during, it's possible that shooting will start during 2023. The movie could see the light even in the second half of 2024. Yeah. I just heard about her this year, read five books, and now I'm like, okay, I'm over it. Yeah. <laughs> Podcast to wrap it in a bow, and we're done with Coco I'll, Forever. I probably will not <laughs> move along, read any more from her just because the type of stories that she writes are yeah. not for me. Mm-hmm. But. Not because I don't think, think yeah. that she's a great writer. I'm with you. I think if she comes out with another type of verity, I might read that one. But yeah. It's so funny that I thought we we're having Shelby on the podcast because I thought she was this fan. Mega fan? Fan. Oh, really? Kind of, yeah. <laughs> I didn't tell her anything. I said Shelby has a, a very interesting perspective. I thought you were like going to come in here and be like, I've read every single book. 
I'm obsessed, <laughs> but because I know so many people that are, you know, people yeah. our age are just yeah. really obsessed with her. And uh, so I'm pleasantly surprised and it makes it makes it more interesting to, to hear that perspective. And um, I think that patients. that's something that I kind of, that I really don't care for about it was because, like I said, I feel like it's like, mm-hmm. if you could pick this fairy tale like if you had to pick a domestic violence relationship to be in, you would It'd choose be that Lily one. Bloom. Yeah. yeah, can I go ahead and actually trade my current yeah. stitch for her? I was like, uh, because all that shit is wrapped up on a random Tuesday. Okay. <laughs> right? right? Yeah. I just I couldn't get down with it. Nice. I like. All that. right. So we you have been listening to another episode of Between the Stacks. Join us next time. We haven't picked another author, but it's going to be so good. It's going to be so good. And if you have any suggestions, we'd love to hear it. Text Anna. (laughs) Don't text me. Stop it. (laughs) Thank you so much for listening. This has been Between the Stacks. After Hours. (laughs) Cheers. Okay, goodbye. You've been listening to Between the Stacks. After Hours a podcast brought to you by the Athens-Limestone County Public Library. Join us next time for another conversation and a close-up look of a featured author and their work. To hear other recordings from our Library Voices podcast series, please visit the Athens-Limestone County Library website at alcpl.org. Library Voices is also now available on Spotify and Apple Podcasts.